All right, please go ahead. Okay, so I'm going to call the Finance Committee meeting of December 11, 2023 to order at 3 p.m. And uh, given the current uh, changes be that have been made to the open meeting laws, it's not applicable. Uh, this meeting is being held uh, by electronic means and members of the public have access to the meeting via Zoom and by telephone. Um, I do want to remind everybody that this meeting is being recorded for uh, both audio and visual purposes. And uh, the agenda for today's meeting, subject mm -hmm. to, um, of course, uh, the order can be varied, uh, but um, we have public comment we, have budget, uh, we were going to go over the budget guidelines discussion from last night and see what um, changes that we would propose to make for the final draft, which would go back to the council on the meeting on December 18. Um, I think Kathy is prepared to lead us in the discussion about um, the carryover memo and uh, that that's essentially it because, uh, well, it says schedule next committee meetings. I don't think we, um, at the conclusion of this meeting, are going to feel that there's a need for this committee to meet again. And then it really is up to um, whoever is appointed to the next committee. So um, is there any questions about the agenda, Athena? There are also, I, I put um, several, many many sets of minutes in the packet for today. I don't expect the committee will get through all of them. I don't expect that members have reviewed all of them. So my suggestion was to authorize a member to approve the minutes from March 28th to December 12th, or if you're planning a meeting on the 15th, then December 15th. Okay, and you added that to the agenda. So yes, I did. That. So uh, thank you for reminding me of that. And, uh, We'll add that. Anything else uh, in comments about the um, agenda for today? Just writing a note on that to remind myself. Seeing none, then uh, let's see if there's any um, participants from the public. You need to make sure we can hear and be heard. Correct. We got through the list uh, just to check attendance. Um, Anna? Hi, everybody. Present. Uh, Lynn? Present. Uh, Bob? Present. Is Matt here? I don't think so. I don't see no. Matt. Bernie told me that he would not be available today, so we know that he's not going to be here. Uh, Kathy? Yep, yeah, I'm here. And um, Alicia, you said it was going to be a few minutes late. We'll just Correct. get out for her. Um, as far as attendees from the public, there's nobody from the public present at the current time. So um, we could come back to public comment later if uh, members of the public do come. Uh, because uh, since there was no public comment last night, I didn't know if there's going to be public comment tonight at this meeting about the guidelines. Uh, therefore, uh, what I was going to propose to do is to aid this discussion, I took the notes from last night's meeting and um, Mandy sent, uh, who is one who offered some significant comments, sent um, a uh, copy of what she had written. They were handwritten version uh, of what uh, her thoughts were about the guidelines to me. Um, and I, she did not speak to the, all of the little edits that she made. She only spoke to what were her major concerns. And those were the only ones that I reflect on the document. So what I was going to do is have Lynn put a document on the screen. And what I did was uh, 
where there were significant changes that she mentioned during the meeting that are incorporated in the document so that um, the section that you're seeing now has several things that came up in the uh, executive summary section and uh, things that she had suggested for changes. Uh, so, and then, but there are some, some further down, you will see as we go through it, that there are things in the comment boxes section that actually need discussion. So let's pause for a moment so you can see what these suggestions were. Uh, I think that the, a major one was that she just wanted to make sure that we didn't imply that press and DEI were more important than other departments, but that all current town services are equally important, including those two departments. So I took that comment and suggested some changes in that longer section. So Andy, um, if, as we go through, if we pass something, let's indicate we've accepted it and I will show that in the document. Whatever, uh, that's fine with me. Um, I'm. If, if you want us just to chime in to make it easier, I'm fine with that. And as I can see it, Lynn, will you just be, um, you can do it any way you want to, to do the revised draft or keep it in track, change it. But I would accept that, you know, as, as Andy said, the, the change that's a lot of blue ink was just to make it clear that these weren't the only essential ones. Um, okay. I think the rewording does that. Right. So they, um, this is really good. Uh, thank you, Kathy, for mentioning that. I think what we have done in the past is to show a marked up version and then a clean version. So I will leave this as marked up unless we change it. Okay. Okay. Um, so I'm I'm fine with those changes. So, yeah, so am I. This, this, for the record. Okay, shall we go on? Yep. 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 Because uh, I think the next one is actually going to be a little bit more problematic because it's going to come out as a comment box, I believe. Yep. Okay. So what happened was is that um, in this one I did do changes. Uh, I'm remembering what it was. So, so we got rid of it. Was to be. Um, that I think it was the suggestion was to be more um, specific and clear about what will happen if there is an increase in state aid, that the state aid would first go to reducing any deficit. And then afterwards, we need to make sure that we would know if there's more of an increase um, than uh, just needed to balance the budget, how a decision gets made. So I, I the suggest the word in order to address that point that Mandy was making that uh, what do we do if there is more of an increase than needed to balance the budget? What is our recommendation? So I wrote this up, but um, that's this is needs to have your uh, discussion and as to whether it's what you want to say as a committee or whether you have an alternative suggestion. I I do. I have an alternative. Um, the way you've written it, um, we're talking about the paragraph you projected no increase, right? That's the paragraph we're talking about? Yes. Um, I would prefer saying if there's a significant and I'll just try to say it quickly. If it's a significant increase in state aid um, beyond what would balance the budget. So, so Lynn, um, it's going to go in the upper paragraph, but you can write it here because he's got, um, we recommend that you come back to the council with a recommendation. As opposed to giving it to the uh, 
convening the budget coordinating group. Exactly. So, so in a way, if we want to focus first on the policy discussion, that's so, the uh, policy uh, discussion. So, so this is, I think, what happened last time, Bob and others may remember, we did get more than we planned. Sean came up with, everyone gets this more money. It was a, a done deal because the library built it in right away, as did everyone else. I think it would have been better to come with a recommendation and have a discussion about it. We may end up with equal increases. Um, so, so I would like this wording and then up above where increases, if there was a dec a reduction in projected revenues, I think that's still fine. So I would it delete the increase in state aid if there were rejection. If there's a reduction, we have to come back to the whole thing. So I would leave that sentence without the increase in state aid added in it. Um, He's okay, I'm trying to figure out where you are, Kathy. Uh, okay. You're right. At the, just after that, it says, if there is a significant... It says, if there's a significant increase in state aid or rejected, I would remove the words that Andy added there completely So it, and leave if there's a significant reduction, that's fine. And then put this, if state aid... So it was, it was to go with what Mandy observed is that we're... A deficit is projected right now. If the state aid up, went up by more than the deficit, um, what would we do? And so, um, so this sentence addresses our recommendation on what to do. So that's my suggestion of the way to handle it. So she, she asked us to come back with a policy, and so I'm, I'm proposing a policy. which is different than what we did a year ago. My memory of it. Yeah, it, it is. It, it was kind of a done deal. Sean came up with, we've got this much more money. This is how everybody's budget adjusts. Um, Are there any members of the committee who have a different view from what Kathy just expressed? I just want to point out that I added to that sentence, uh, recommendation regarding the distribution yeah. of those additional funds. Yeah, that's exactly what I meant. I didn't know what to <laughs> exactly. Where did the, where's the money go? And because we get the state aid information pretty late, but by then we might know whether we've really got a gap somewhere that we need to fill. Um, so that's why I wanted to have a discussion first rather than it's three, three, three right now. Everyone gets three percent, rather than deciding everyone goes to three point five or whatever the number is. So that's my suggestion of what to insert there to address Mandy. Mandy basically was asking that we give it, put in the guideline what to do if this happens. Okay, but what is this suggestion? Wait a minute. Uh, let's see. Um, the, I'm. A wanting to get the council sports continuation of the policy that reserve funds should not be used to support recurring expenses for reasons we will explain. Okay, that was just a move. Right. So that's okay. The next one, um, that was actually a fairly significant point and Kathy agreed with it, but it requires um, help from Holly uh, probably, or uh, for one of our uh, finance experts, but um, Mandy's um, question was how much of the $3,294,285 needs to be um, reserved just to continue this um, compensation of current employees because we don't know what the cost of the salary increases or are, are negotiated increases in bargaining agreements um, is required and what and if there's anything left over afterwards or any other purposes. And uh, Kathy, I think you then made a statement a little bit later in the meeting supporting that position and pointing out that uh, 
this requires in, uh, the information from uh, our uh, finance department staff. So Holly and Jennifer, the I don't know how difficult or easy this is, but of the the idea is to cover the wage, health insurance, and pension increase compared to baseline. What is the cost of that? And so is that a million and a half? Is that two million? And I know you've got it in all sorts of different parts of your budget. So we're not trying to give you a major research project on two weeks before the holidays. <laughs> so it was a question of, is it possible to calculate that? Um, so like health insurance is, you know what the 12% increase will cost us, presumably, you know, on the pension side and then the wages, this would be particularly, it would be schools, library and our staff. Um, um, can I just point out, and Kathy, you've already said this, those are presently in the budget, the, the projected budget. So it me would mean a mad, uh, aggregating them. Basically, what we've already learned with the projected budget is that with those built in and anything else projected forward in the budget, we have a $200,000 deficit. No, exactly. And and if this is a really difficult number to do it, it was a suggestion and then maybe in future years. So I'm just looking on, it, Lynn, that's exactly the point, you know, that if if wages and benefits alone take up a lot, you know, so people keep thinking there must be some wiggle room in this budget. And the answer is no, it's really tight. Um, so I just, I'm just looking to Holly and Jenna on how difficult, so we can leave, we can say this it's too much time for pressure to calculate this or if you've got a number we just would write a sentence with a blank in it okay so I'll, would you like me to quickly speak to that yes yes okay so it certainly can be done but um it it is going to take a bit of time because i mean unfortunately the way that we budget is literally by the person. Um, two of our unions have very, very recently settled. So I have not got all of their um, projections for the next year in yet because we we literally go person by person for this one. Um, so I can, I can work on getting a number there. It's not gonna be something that I can just answer quickly. It will take time. By the time the budget is, is ready to be presented, we certainly have all of that in there, but that right now is still a work in progress. So then should we, I mean, we can say this would be nice to have in the future, but not do it now is what I, I mean, I don't think this is urgent enough for you to spend time. My opinion is that asking you to spend time between now and next Monday does not make sense to me <laughs> um, if it's not kind of easy to do. It's not that simple. I could give some some rough numbers, but it uh, I, I'll I'll have to take a look at it. So, so my recommendation, Andy, is to say we can't do this right now, but if a number appears, we can insert a sentence. Um, yeah, I mean, my assumption had been, I think, when we wrote when we were writing the draft, the first time is that uh, prior experience has been that by the time you do salary increases and um, health insurance increases, it really has spoken for uh, virtually all of the 3%. So we just were making an assumption. And what Mandy was asking is, can we prove it? And I, and I think that Bob has the answer is no, because at this point in time, we're making we're going under the best estimation possible, and that's what we were acting on, which is what you were acting on on the budget that you presented at the financial indicators meeting. So Bob has his hand up, Andy. Yeah, Bob. Yeah, I I was just gonna I I I agree with Kathy that this is a nice to have this year, uh, but I don't see. How I don't think it's worth it, um, worth Holly's time or the time of staff to do this. 
I agree with you, Andy, that it's probably going to eat, the 3% is probably going to be taken up by uh, people costs. Um, I, I think going forward, it would be good to have um, a summary of what we're spending, you know, on various, uh, you know, capital projects, uh, wages, so, you know, I mean, it would be nice to have that broken out in a table at some point um, so that we can we can understand where the increases are going. Um, but I, I, again, I think this year, uh, given that I think, you know, I think the the settlements with the unions were were just we just renegotiated everything. Is that correct, Holly? You know, over this year. So next year we'll have a much better idea of what the salary increases are going forward. So right. I, think I believe four of our five unions um, settled and two of them, I believe, were like within the last month or so. So those ones I don't have, I'm, right. I'm working on it, but I, I'm just not even close to finished yet. There's another problem here, and which was uh, the three point two nine four million was in the revenue, but the revenue then gets split up also with capital, regional schools, uh, Amherst schools, library, and other expenses. So it's not like that's a number that is attributable to even the expenses that are the municipal budget expenses. So I think what Lynn has done is in a common bubble is the right way to do this. And then say, you know, we can do a, a cover memo saying we didn't do it, but we recommend that we think about it for next year. And so we could just move to the next part of this. I don't want to make a promise for our next, create an expectation for next year if it's not. Yeah, no, but, but it's just as time. I would just say literally that it's too time consuming to do now. What Lynn has done makes sense. At this time of the, at this time of the budget process, it's not just this year. Yeah, Holly's got her. Don't create expectations for next year. Okay. Okay. And, and Andy, Holly has her hand up. Yeah, Holly, I'm sorry. I, I just wanted to briefly respond to in saying that when it comes to the elementary schools um, personnel, I do not do projections on that. That would be a request to um, the school. Okay. We don't do their we don't do their personnel side so, of it. I just wanted so that whole, to be clear. So this is a, a difficult exercise period, yeah, to me. A little bit. <laughs> yeah. So I want to just clarify what we're trying to point out to people is that whatever increase in this case, 3 million something that we are expecting, it's already spoken for. It's not like all of a sudden we have this much more cash we can distribute. Yep. Do you propose saying that? No, I'm just, I want to even this will be needed. This will be needed to cover right. employee wages, benefits, supplies, building roads, and more. As these costs are known, they are inclu already included. Ready? Included in the projected budget. And, and we do say that, I mean, I know we're reading on the revenue, but when we get to expenses, we point out that salaries are going up by this much. What, uh, health insurance is going up by that much. Pensions, this is like makes this a really tight budget. Um, so yeah. we, we've we got all that wording later. Yeah. I think uh, this is I think this is fine for now. Actually to hold on for just a second. Um I might take out two words and just say all as these costs are known, they are included in the budget. And the reason is that uh Holly and uh, will be working with Jennifer and, and whoever else in the department in coming up with numbers 
to put into the final budget. And uh, that's where they really develop that information. And that is, uh, we will see that as the increases in the budget the, uh, when we're presented in May 1st. So Andy, let me push further on that. As these costs are known, they are included in the budget, but they are actually included under different departments and units of government. So it's not like at one point in the budget, we say, here is what personnel and benefits cost. That's true. You want to add? Um, you can say in the departmental bu budgets, and then you would get the plural. <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay. And then you got to take the other budget out. It's satisfactory to everybody. Yeah. yeah, I just I don't want somebody to think that somehow or another they're going to look at the budget book and see a salary, a benefit number for everybody. Right. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's get on to the. Um, this was language that. I'm I'm perfectly fine with this. Yes. So what do you want me to do with the comment? Just get rid of it? Yeah. 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 Uh, when we... I can just say resolved. Yeah, yeah. we'll have to decide what we're... It, it, in a final draft, all of that goes away. But here, for the purposes of people feeling they've been heard, we can just say resolved. Yeah. You know, you've got that reply right. button, Lynn, that you can just put, if you hit reply, it says resolved. <laughs> yeah, I, no, I already did that. Yeah, okay. Moving along. See, I just hit resolved. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I didn't see. Okay, moving along. I think this was one where she just made a uh, handwritten suggestion on rewording. I want to push on this. Are we saying to, we ensure that the grant budget or that the town's budget? I think that what she was referring to actually is that we make sure that we have the capacity to apply for grants that would be of value to the town. Then I think, because this this has been brought up several times this year, okay? This is the world I worked in for many years. Um, so we wanna make sure, we wanna ensure that the town has the resor enough resources either within its own budget or the grant to support these goals? Yeah, her wording, this change in wording doesn't do that, Lynn. I think it, no, it, it, does, yeah, it doesn't work. No. The old wording basically was saying we need, you're probably going to need more money. We urge you. Would it be better to say, urge you to take steps to ensure or seek financial enhancements to ensure that the budget? And and that's what we had. So maybe we urge. I think, but it, but I think before it didn't say the budget has resources to achieve these goals, and shifting it to say that you might need to seek financial enhancements, but that the budget should support these goals. I think it strengthens the idea that the budget should prioritize climate action. So it's urge you. So Anna, I'm agreeing with you. So yeah. our original wording was um, we urge you. Uh, to seek, we we originally said we urge you to continue to seek financial enhancements to support these goals. I think that's good wording, actually. <laughs> but I, I think, but I think I agree, Kathy. But I think that what we could do to to get at what Mandy, I think what 
my understanding of what Mandy is saying is that um, the seeking financial enhancements is one way, but what's more important is to ensure that we have the resources. Uh, and so in my mind, it would read best as urge you to continue to seek such financial enhancements to ensure the budget has enough resources to support these goals. It's just moving that. Or and ensure. Well, no, to it, you need to ensure. To, yeah, okay, thank you. Can I also look at the sentence? It's not just in climate action that we've been very successful with grants. Yep. Um, I would also, I would almost say. I, I think, Lynn, I think we should add it elsewhere. I don't think we should take it out of this. Well, then why don't we say climate action and other goals? Well, it does say and other Ooh, needs. Goodness. It says other needs. other needs, Lynn, if you want to do comma including roads <laughs> no <laughs> no i i'm it's it's more than just roads i mean we get so many grants we get them for police we get them for fire yeah. we get them no, we've got them for we've got them for parks we've got yeah. them yeah what do you th i mean i think that's why we had written it originally climate action and other needs um and that was because we were getting so much pressure around doing more for climate action. And we were trying to point out that climate action is a place we can get goals. I think that it was all that criticism that we were getting around that one specific need that got us there. How about other goal areas? And other goal, and you could say other goals, right? Mm -hmm. That works. Yeah, it would just be lower. Um, I'm going to pause I'm, for a I'm, second, I'm, by the way. We, um, members of the public have come into the meeting after we started. When we started the meeting on time, there were we uh, omitted public comment solely because there was no one else, um, no one from the public was present. We will come back and do public comment, but we are now proceeding through a draft of the uh, guidelines, which has comments that arose at last night's discussion. And that's what's going on now, but we will get back to public comment. So thank you, uh, Lynn Cubitt. We're back to the... I think Bob was yeah, offering... I, I, I... If I, I I don't I wasn't at the meeting, but I'm wondering whether what Mandy was trying to say is we need to sure we need to ensure that we have enough money in the budget to pay somebody to write grants. I mean, I think it was it, it's it's that part that's not in what we're what we already have there. It's um, not just right; it's actually manage them once we get them to manage them. Yes. Yeah, but I mean that we don't. I think that's maybe what we need to say is something to that effect that that we need staff time in order to write get these grants and manage these grants. So do you, Bob, if you would you put has enough resources? I hate long sentences, comma including staff, comma to support these goals. That's fine. Because that's been one of the issues that bringing in money and not being able to do something. I think one of the clarifying points is that not every grant we get is for a continual program that needs budget support forever and ever, right? And so I think that that's my, one of my other things is just because it won't be in the budget forever doesn't mean we shouldn't still do it. Um, we just need to make sure it's explicitly stated that this program will end at a certain point or will, you know, I think that that, for me, that's more important uh, is to seek out that funding. And, um, you know, if it's something we plan to continue in perpetuity, then a funding plan beyond the grant needs to be presented, but not everything needs to continue in perpetuity that is grant funded. And so just, I think it's more about clarifying and managing expectations 
Um, so I, I think that support these goals is broad enough that some might mean permanent shifts and some might mean one-time grants that that fund one specific thing. If that, I think that's, that's I think with the concern that was being alluded to last night was that if we, we don't want to put language in here that is discouraging seeking out grants just because we don't have staff or because we don't know that we can continue them forever. And I think what Mandy's point was is that we we kind of need to get, we need to pick either the, I keep using the chicken and egg metaphor, but we need to pick one because uh, we need to get staff to seek out and manage these grants in order to continue to pursue them. I think I just talked to myself is, in a circle. But there I think is another to... section on grants later in the guidelines because I think it comes comes up in this um, actual expenditure section. That's what I was trying to pull up, Andy. Thank and, you. If, if we could, because I think uh, that was where and the... there, there's a comment box there too. Yeah. I think this wording actually covers it, to tell you the truth. I think I, so too. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. All right. Keep We're it in agreement. mind, and when we go down the document, you'll get there. But let's hand them in order. Um, this is the biggie, the next one. We spent a lot of time, we probably spent more time last night in the end talking about uh, the two. But, but, but Andy, you mean on council compensation, we had a specific recommendation. No, other elected boards. Yeah, so we said if, the language we came up with last night was if there is a decision to increase compensation for other elected boards, we recommend you include them in the budget. When did the recommendation have to come? I think that there was also discussion about timing of the recommendation and um, when the budget is being developed. And if uh, a recommendation is made after the budget development, then what is uh, what are you going to do? Well, maybe you say you propose a way to fund them um, because it, it was a if something happens, you need to be prepared. Um, was the way it came up. That you provide provide a recommendation on how to fund them. It's like an awkward sentence to me, but let's read it. By the way, the only other board, I mentioned this last night, that gets any compensation is, in fact, the school board. Yeah, um, but you have to remember, if you go back to the uh, charter, uh, the charter didn't limit it. It just provided in the transition section that only the school committee was uh, getting it. But I don't think that the charter says that there can Mm -hmm. The other board can be compensated. I don't know. Uh, Athena. Bob has, Bob has his hand up. Bob? Yeah, I just, I mean, I understand what Mandy is, is, is getting at here, but I think it would be, um, I don't see how we could fund these in FY, in the FY25 budget, um, or the yeah. FY24 budget. Um, you know, it's, or the, the you know the FY25 budget sorry i mean if it if we decide if there is a decision to increase compensation or to compensate boards i think it has to wait until the next budget year in order to be implemented i don't yeah. see how we have any room in this this year's budget to, to do that and i'm I Kathy, would... Kathy here's her hand up and i do too then so lynn i would edit your sentence to address what bob we we take out, we we ask you to provide a recommendation on how they may be funded, take out the rest. Because I don't think, you know, we ask that it, so 
if there's a if we ask that you and then take out the funds sufficient yeah provide yeah because if you say it that way it's it can come back as this can't be funded until fy26 yeah but i i just want to point out the discussion in the past was one thousand dollars for school committee there are only five school committee members it's only five thousand dollars more and I, I realize that's 5000 but I'm having a hard time figuring out. Well, I don't think that it precludes. It doesn't preclude that, Lynn. That, you no. know, $5,000 in FY25. I just think, you know, we shouldn't open the, the, the floodgates. <laughs> For um, other boards, I, I would agree with that. Yeah. And this language doesn't stop him from saying it's small enough. We've got the wiggle room in the budget. Um, right. Doesn't stop anything. Can I ask a question? How does this decision get made? I think somebody from the council has to uh, make a motion that, and you know, it's, it, it's a practical matter. You probably would get there. It would be because of a request from the school committee, or because they asked the school committee whether they thought. The compensation increase was appropriate. Okay, so it, it to me it's highly unusual language to put in an, at all since we're not facing it. <laughs> but we we have a okay. This is what you would do. I think we need to include something. Yeah. So that wording seems to me fine. This I'm okay with this wording. Okay, got it. Okay. All right. This could include something happened here. Um, just one second. Well, oh. I... probably just I when could put in language that she, uh, Mandy had actually pointed that out too, and and it was a suggestion. I have to go back. This, it's just a, a random hard there you return. Go. It's it's done. She, okay. This is a now it's off again, but the um I think this is a big thing to add in a financial guideline for the following year. Um, it's more we want him. The suggestion was how much revenue are we getting from the solar that we put in? Um, and what are we doing with the savings? You know, so I think from the big installation we have, apparently it's it's offsetting most of the utility cost, electricity costs of town buildings. As I recall, the the revenues from the solar on the landfill are going to the solid waste fund. Is that correct? Yes, I think so. Alicia has joined us. Hi, thank you, Lynn. I didn't want to interrupt the conversation, but did just want to let you all know that I was here. Thanks. I, I, you know, Mandy's wording, Lynn, is that we're recommending that he report on it, right? We recommend that he report. We, you know, based on president, we we recommend you report on revenues. I, th I think that wording is okay if people don't think it's too, um, you know, and I'll give you an example in the, f in the future, next, 
two years, three years from now, the school solar panels will be offsetting utility costs in the school. And we have a, where does that go? Yeah. We recommend, we recommend not re recommendation, we recommend. How's that? I, to me, that reads fine. Yeah, I agree. Okay, so we resolved this. Yeah. Okay. Before you go on, um, I think that the problem that we still have, Bill, I corrected, we don't need to worry about it now. Just above, this could include. I, I corrected that, Andy. Yeah, so that when... uh, it just needs to be closed up as a single it, set. It does, yeah. When she does simple markup, it's fixed. It's fixed. It's right. fixed. Okay. It, doesn't show, it just isn't showing as fixed. Okay, go on then. Alicia, what's happening is that I made notes uh, last night's meeting, and then they're recorded as either changes or comment boxes. So these were all things that came up last night. Okay, so can I speak to this next one, Andy? I think um, replacement is cool, the one that, to, and I think we should literally say here, which is what was our understanding, we recommend that any um, uh, rebates uh, obtained for the in in Inflation Reduction Act from these investments go back to this capital stabilization fund. That was exactly what we agreed to do. And she wanted to codify it here, which I think makes sense. And he's, she's got the wording there, Land should go back into the capital stabilization fund. That was always the intent. intent. We recommend that any rebates obtained from um, re, refunds from what? It's, for, it's re, same from the Inflation Reduction Act for um, the, if you want to say for the solar and geothermal investments, that's where it's coming from. Can I suggest that there may be other funds besides this? So, or other fund or similar funds, comma, or similar funds. Yep. That they should go back to the capitalization fund. We recommend that any rebates obtained from the, or similar funds. Just sit. I would take out that they just should, yeah. should go back to the capitalization, capital stabilization, capital stabilization fund. fund. Yeah. And Andy, I made a comment I shouldn't have last night on uh, North Amherst Library. A, I don't think there is anything. So I would just take that out of your comment box. Okay. Uh, I mean, because I'm I double checked. Not. We're putting mini splits in there. We're putting air source and th they're not eligible. So I would just, I would just take it out. Okay. There, since it was said, we can't take it out, but I said not applicable. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is resolved. Got it. Holly has her hand up. Yeah, hi, hi. Um, I just want to go back to what you were just speaking about with um rebates from, and and I, I I'm not a hundred percent sure what the conversation was, but I just want to caution you that if that is something that 
you think that the town council is going to be interested in doing, it's going to be one of those similar type of situations, similar to the cannabis money and the opioid settlement money. It's going to have to be general fund revenue. It's going to have to fall to free cash that you're going to have to move it in a subsequent fiscal year. So it's going to take that sort of process. It can't just go back, especially if it's received in later fiscal years and things like that. So um, in order to put that money into the stabilization funds, it's going to have to go through that process, just so you're aware. Is there anything we should say here that says it should be tracked or something like I, I th First of all, thank you for reminding us of that, Holly. Um, I think this um, does it's just that we recognize there's a process to put it back into that fund. Right. And that's all I just wanted to make sure you folks were aware. It's not that it's not that simple <laughs> with a lot of these things. Um, it, it certainly can be done, but it, it is it, it's not something that when the money comes in, we can just dump it in there. It has to go through those processes. It will fall to free cash and then it has to be appropriated to put back. Yeah. That's Thank you for the reminder because it's it complicated. That's where I mentioned there was more discussion about grants. Yeah, I think it was a comment on this paragraph, not a question of changing it. That's what I thought, but uh, I was duty bound to uh, take my notes from last night and place yeah. them somewhere. It, I don't have any issue with this paragraph. Yeah, I don't either. I said, I, and I think I said that actually. I think. Hey. Oh, I think that was it, actually. I'm pretty confident. And um, I don't think I missed anything. So uh, I think what we should do next is go back to the public comment, because if any public comment has to do with the budget guidelines, I don't want to take action to say, okay, send it back to the council as we just amended it. So um, if it's okay, um, I will ask for public comment. And I, so as a matter of policy, the um, finance committee always uh, provides an opportunity for public comment. We ask that uh, comments be limited to a few minutes, but uh, can deal with any subject that is relevant to the um, uh, what's assigned to the finance committee. It does not need to relate to today's agenda, but can relate to any agenda item. And with that introduction, uh, if somebody could bring Tony into the uh, meeting so that because uh, her hand is up. Lynn, would you stop sharing your screen, please? And and Lynn, I saw the type title. When you get a chance to, it should say, say revised draft, you know, so we're responding to just so you know that this is the, actually the revision. Thanks. So, Tony, hi. Hi, thank Good you. Afternoon. Good afternoon, Tony Cunningham, Owen Drive. Um, I'm calling about the library project. I know you already voted to recommend uh, that the town council approve it, but since you took that vote, uh, it's come to my attention that there was a document in the packet of the building committee from, uh, it's dated November 20th. It was in their meeting on November 27th. And it has a line, I don't quite know what it means, but I'd love if the finance committee could explain it since that's under your purview to understand the finances. So it's got the 3.3 million construction and owner's project contingency, but it appears to have a deduction from that and it's called additional need. It's $2,864,800. 
And then it has a bottom line total contingency, $446,000. And then there seems to be a line above fees and expenses of the same amount. So I don't know what it means, but I would love it if the Finance Committee could explain it. Um, does this mean there is no contingency left in the project? Or is this contingency still there? What is the additional need line, the $2.9 million? Um, just trying to understand the financial risk of this project. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Tani. Um, we can take up the library project again other, under other business not anticipated. Let me just mention that we are in the process of getting a response to that question, working with our uh, building um, commissioner, whatever Bob Parent's name is. Uh, it's not the building because that's Rob Mora. Special projects I mean, manager. I mean, Bob Parent. Yes, special projects coordinator. Is that it? I believe so. Okay. And it will be in the responses to the questions um, that we're still working on. Thank you. So I guess as a finance committee, um, at this point, since we don't anticipate another meeting, for the council, we just recommend that there be um, an explanation for the council meeting. That is correct. Okay. So I don't think there's anything else to be said under on, on the top. So are there any other requests for public comment? Seeing none, then... Um, Get back to the um, guide the guidelines. Um, do we need a uh, motion to um, submit the um, amended, or do we can we just do it by agreement? I'm I'm fine with uh, not doing a motion, but if somebody wants to make a motion, we can. I suggest you make a motion to recommend the budget guidelines as. Okay, um, then we need. Then I will uh, make a motion that uh, we submit a second, a new draft of the budget guidelines in accordance with the discussion and changes made at today's finance committee meeting. Can I change submit to recommend adoption of the revised draft? Okay, finance committee recommends adoption of the revised draft um, from the finance committee meeting of December 11, 2023. You got, is that the motion now? I'm gonna change 11 to 12. Yeah, because okay. today's, well, today's the 12th. Yeah, got it, thank you. Anything else? Do we need a second though? I second. Okay, so we have motions made and second. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing no discussion on the motion, I will uh, go through the committee as present. Uh, Anna? Aye. Lynn? Aye. <laughs> uh, Bob? Port? Um, I believe that Matt has not joined us, so is marked as absent for this vote. Bernie, we know is absent for this. Kathy? Yes. And I'm a yes. Alicia? Abstain. So we have um, four yes, one abstain, support from one resident member, two resident members absent. And the motion carries. So thank you. Uh, I, I just want to I want to say thanks to Andy and Kathy for the heavy lifting on pulling this draft together. Um, pretty awesome. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, 
Kathy, you had uh, been giving, well, I was doing my piece this morning, which you've just dealt with. Kathy was giving a few minutes thought to the question of the transfer memo. And, and uh, Andy, I like the way you summarized that a few minutes, because right after we, we talked a half hour before the meeting, and then I got two phone calls. So it's a, a few minutes. So we need to do a carryover item memo, and there's a format. Um, and I'm just wondering whether uh, we can ask how Holly could leave if she would like to leave um, for this discussion. But, but we need to do a, a formal carryover memo. And I've looked at the way um, the other groups have done it. And I can show you an outline of what it will contain. But um, our four items, as Andy has said before in several of our reports, is the HRA financial options discussion. We did do a report on it. And we will, in the carryover memo, we'll say the date it was referred to us when we discussed it, a little bit about the discussion, and we're held, holding it over to 2024, pending decisions on the committee structure and um, answers to some questions from KP Law on a variety of issues. So that's, I can show my screen, but this is in pure outline form. The other item is streetlights. It was referred to finance, but we never discussed it because it was then sub substantially amended. Um, and so we postponed the discussion. And now it's been referred out to the town manager to come back with a recommendation. So it's a carryover to 2024 pending hearing back from the town manager. Mm -hmm. The rental, the next one is the rental bylaw free structure. Um, it's now back in committee. And if there are substantial changes, it's likely to come back to us. So right now it's a carryover for, for potential additional meetings in 2024. And the last is disposal of surplus property. We got a, we showed the original document and Athena did a, a draft, an early draft that basically updated terms to fit our council structure, but we've never had a discussion of it. So we are carrying it over to 2024. That's what my memo will say. Right now, it has bullet, 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 bullet on it. Um, and because so, I didn't have time to write it out in a formal way. Most of the other committees, what they did is the day it was referred, whether they had any discussion, and then they refer the carryover. Um, so I've given you what the text will say. It's in a pure outline form right now. And I don't think I'm missing anything, Andy. We talked quickly. Those were the four um, items that we're carrying over. Um, uh, Andy, if I could really quickly, can we just confirm that Matt can hear us and be heard? He's no, joined a couple good. minutes ago. Hey there. All set. Thanks, Matt. And Kathy, um, I just want to check because you were going fast. You have AHRA, streetlights, waste hauler, surplus property. Uh, what Waste hauler was never referred to us. It was TSO. Um, TSO got the referral with input from finance. I believe I can look up the motion. I, I, like, I can't remember ever seeing it on our list. We never because, heard. Because I don't think, can you double check, Athena. I don't, re, you know, it, there was an issue of getting uh, competitive bids uh, and stuff, but it. Ne I don't think it ever came to us. No, it's, because the, it's, the, it's never the come back got far enough. It's never come back to the council even for a referral to finance. Um, I'll check on the motion. She'll check on the motion. Okay, so it was uh to refer the proposed amendment to the bylaw to TSO in consultation with the finance committee. So it it is in finance committee. It just hasn't finance committee hasn't participated in the conversation yet because we're we're not really there yet. Um, and then the other thing that I wanted to mention, so uh, the committees typically uh, separate what's automatically carried over and other things that should be carried over. And your point about the rental registration fees wouldn't be in an automatic carryover because it hasn't been referred to finance committee. Finance committee has already finished their recommendation. So that's a should be carried over if it comes back to finance committee or if CRC has substantial um, changes to the fee structure. Okay. 
you know, so it's 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 a wording issue on how I write that one up. Yes. And then for waste hauler, I mean, it, it should be included in the carryover memo as an automatic carryover because it has been uh, sent to finance committee for uh, input to TSO, um, but it can be very brief. I can send you the motion and it could basically just be that because you haven't discussed it at all. I, not to just not discuss it. I don't think it ever got on an agenda. No, I don't, I don't remember oh, okay. on any of our agendas. I just uh, was uh, talking with co-sponsors because I'm one of the co-sponsors of that uh, bylaw and uh, we were discussing the uh, carryover for the TSO, uh, but TSO never got far enough into it because there was that request for information, RFI, that was responded to by several haulers and uh, the uh, person who had been doing consulting services from state DEP uh, had, uh, was then going to summarize those and get it back to TSO. And that did not happen. And uh, so um, TSO just put it in its carryover memo, which is why we don't have anything. Yeah, Kathy, I just sent, I just sent you the language of the council motion to refer. Okay, so, so I will do it. So the initial motion recommended consultation with finance. I will just say the consultation didn't occur because we never received <laughs> a proposed document. Okay. Or, or TSO hasn't reached the stage in the process where finance could be consulted about any, any of that yet. Yep. So what I would suggest is as follows, because I, I'm still working on uh, the assumption that we don't need another meeting of this committee before the end of the term is um, that uh, we ask Kathy to, uh, in consultation with any other members of the committee that she may determine is uh, that she needs, which then enables her to consult me. Uh, but Kathy will make the decision as to the final wording and then send it out to the committee for comments. And if there are no comments, then uh, we will submit it. And and what I'll do is a big person I'll consult with is Athena, because there's very a very official kind of wording in the other memos. I would never write it quite that officially, but I'm willing to conform to um, precedent. I'm, it's I'm, only I'm, been it's only been one. <laughs> one term that's kind of set that precedent. So there, there is some leeway. Um, so it sounds like, Andy, what you're suggesting is the committee reach a consensus that Kathy's authorized to finalize the carryover memo? Yeah. Yes. And, and, and then I'll draft it. Today is, what is today? Tuesday. Um, I'll try to get it back to people by Thursday for any comments. I mean, that doesn't need to be in the motion. <laughs> But if people are willing to to uh, free it up to me, and then you get to see a draft of it. So do do you need to take a vote on that, Andy? Or everyone should. Uh, yes. We, you think we need to take a vote on it? Uh, I don't think. Okay. Okay. So um, that said. Uh, we're getting to the um, end of our service on this particular finance committee because uh, I'm going to open it up to see if anybody has any final comments or um, requests to take any items up. Otherwise, okay. I can't. If we have we have the minutes minutes are on the agenda. Oh and yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I saw Athena's hand so the proposal of the minutes <laughs> is actually that I take. Um, I have uh, been in the um, in the past reviewing minutes and then letting you know that um, the minutes have been reviewed, but um, and uh, you've just been adopting them. But actually, we can uh, just designate the authority to adopt. And it's just to a to a single member, 
and that will require a motion. Kathy? I'd be happy to, to I move that we designate one person to review and finalize the minutes um, that are in our packet going back to March. And just that's my motion. And that was a process we used for the first few years. So when we convene again next year, I'd like to have that be a topic right away and whether we should use that process again. But I think we have a, a backlog and we need to move them. My question, Andy, I've made the motion. My, my question is, who are we designating? I need that for the motion. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I'm willing to, to continue to do the the minutes, I feel that I'm responsible for the fact that they got bogged down. So then I move that we designate Andy to find, to review and finalize the minutes dating back to, um, Athena, you have it in the packet already, but dating back to March 223. Uh, March 28, 2023 to December 12, 2023. Okay. I'll second that. Okay, so there's been a motion that's made and seconded. The seconder was Anna. Yep. Yep. Uh, and I'll just so that you know, if I feel that I need help, then it gives me the ability to still ask for help from some of you to take to help me with some of the minutes if it gets bogged down, but. Um, it's easier to do it this way to have one person have the responsibility and be able to approve. Uh, so having said that, um, let me just write, we'll go through Lynn, uh, I'm gonna start with you on the vote. Yes, and thank you. Uh, Bob? Or Matt? Support. Bernie is absent. Kathy? Yes. I will vote yes. Alicia? Yes. And Anna? Aye. So it is, this one is unanimous with two resident members in support and uh, one resident member absent. And uh, so the Matt, um, you missed the, uh, I'm sorry you couldn't get here earlier, but understand and appreciate all you're doing. Um, we went through the uh, guidelines draft from last time and discussed all of the sections where there were comments made at last uh, night's council meeting. And, um, uh, made changes as deemed appropriate and um, that was then approved as the new draft to be sent to the uh, committee and so when um, that gets put together you'll get a copy but there weren't major things but there were there were important comments that needed to, uh, needed to be considered and we did so so that said um I, unless somebody else has something to say, I just want to conclude by thanking all of you because I think that it's been a really good group process that we've worked together very well. And uh, I just appreciate um, the hard work you all put into it. Andy, uh, I, I just wanted to say that um, Given my election to the council, I will have to resign as a resident member of the committee, and there's no guarantee I'll be on the committee next time. So I hope I am, but there's no guarantee. So anyway, if uh, for some reason I'm not, thank you very much. I really enjoyed working with everyone, and it's been a great committee. Well, Bob. thank you, Bob. And, and none of us are guaranteed that we'll be on the committee again. Bob, I just want to make sure that your resignation is effective January 2nd. Yes, I'll make it effective January 2nd. Okay. And 
I just I take that back. Matt is Matt and Bernie are guaranteed that they're still on the committee. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so I just oh, want to, I just want to say, Bob, I totally encourage you to say you want to be on finance. <laughs> um, just just so everyone knows, Lynn has sometimes had to um encourage people to fill all the slots. And it's fabulous that you've been with us as Matt and Bernie. I mean, I've always thought these slots give an opportunity to learn so much about the town and the budget that when we're elected as counselors, especially the two-year terms, it's too sh it's so short. And to have that uh, depth of knowledge is has, has been has been and will be critical. And Andy, you brought that to us from day one a long time ago because you'd done it before on the select board. So I think this this uh, it was wise of the charter to allow us to do this. And I would like to do it in other committees as well, because it's it's a continuity that serves the town really well. Um, so I Andy, I'd, I'd like to do the following. I'd like to ask our two less experienced counselors. I don't want to say new because you've been with us for two years, at least. Well, um, what else we could do to help you learn the financial ins and outs of the town? And how can we get our colleagues down the road to be more engaged, even if they're not on finance? Lynn, I'm assuming you're talking to me. I've only been on finance for one year, um, actually. And so for me, this is definitely the steep, a steep learning curve. Um, I think what would be helpful, there was a lot that was covered in finance that isn't necessarily, it's part of the larger picture, but you know, we got the the audit reports, we got all of the updates on OPEB. Those are all elements that aren't, I don't mean to say they're not exciting, um, but they're not necessarily as flashy as some of the other things that we do or as blatantly impactful to most residents as other things we do. I think it would be helpful to think about the responsibilities of each committee beyond the charge. So things that you know the committees will do every year and an annual workflow that committees do. I mean, this is, I think it's especially true for finance because finance has an annual workflow that the other committees don't necessarily have. Yeah. But um, or with the regularity that I'd say other committees don't necessarily have. But generally speaking, I think an annual workflow for finance would be helpful, as well as an overview of things you're going to be discussing that maybe aren't as front of mind for some of us as we run for council. I actually did that, I think, after the first year on the count of the council. And um, in, in sort of as a replacement for a carryover memo, saying we have nothing to carry over, but it would be good for people to know what the committee did. And uh, I think that that can be found again. And uh, it really did do exactly what you said. And we do have the, we do have the budget calendar as well. Yeah, that's true. I, I, yeah. But yeah. I, I understand what you're saying, but there is, you know, at least yeah. that in terms of what happens to the budget. I think it's a, think it's a great idea um, to also post for the full council, Anna, that, you mm -hmm. know, there's there's certain things that are going through finance because we got the um, the accountant's report where yes. we had a subcommittee when we first started and then we folded in, you know, that this is coming to us um, and it's not going to, it, for the most part, the details of it aren't going to come to the full council, but right. this is coming and it's going to come at, in this cycle. Right. Yep. I think yeah. that, you know, because people might want to, um, your eyes may glaze over, but OPEB, all of the funding decisions for that were set just before the council was elected on setting it up. And we continued those policies about funding. Um, but most people can't even easily define what it is. I mean, yeah, Kathy, you say eyes glazed over. I had to turn my camera off because I put my hands on my face and I was staring about two inches from my computer trying to make sure I was following it all. Um, <laughs> it's a lot of information. And I think it, it would be helpful to define and clarify. And I'm sure that that's somewhere I could find. Um, but I think when folks are assigned to finance, that could be something that's helpful for them to perceive or as people are deciding committees. I'm not sure, but yeah. I, 
I want to I want to come back to Anna in a moment, but Alicia, how about you? How about you? Yeah, I actually, I really agree with Anna. And I almost think that like, I also experienced a very steep learning curve, even, uh, you know, being on the finance committee for two years. And I think that like, even if when members are appointed, there's like, if you want, there's this info packet and it can include some of the things like what Anna was describing. And I do think that that might be helpful um, in terms of setting people up who have not been on finance before. Um, and I'm not sure this is something that can always happen, but it was also really helpful for me to serve with people who have been on the finance before. Um, so not that I didn't appreciate every single one of you because I did, but like Andy and Kathy have been really, um, really great resources and like they are always willing to answer questions as well as Athena, of course. Um, but I think like being able to have people who are very experienced and who know what has happened in the past, because I've realized that in terms of finance, it's really important, like what has already happened even before I was, you know, really paying attention to what has happened in like town fiscal precedents or just our regular practices. And I think it took me a while to sort of catch on to some of the things that aren't necessarily written rules, but just the way that we do things. Um, so it has been really helpful to have the senior members of the committee to to sort of lean on and to to learn those things from them. You know, it you know was, it was, I'm sorry, go ahead. Alicia, one, no, of, the sure, things well, that, sorry. Uh, one of the things that strikes me about that is there's also a bunch of things the council inherited. Kathy just mentioned one of them, which was the OPEB commitment. Um, but the first council inherited some things that even the second council may not realize we, it wasn't, we didn't start this, okay? I'll give you an example. The um, North Common was not something this council started. It was something we inherited. Um, the uh, 132 Northampton Road was something this council inherited. We didn't start it. Uh, and that's even going back five years. So that's kind of an interesting reminder for all of us that uh, keeping track of kind of things that came along in the continuation of one form of government to the next is important. But Anna, you brought up something a couple times and uh, two things that I think have been very interesting to listen to. One is how can we make the budget review and the budget process more meaningful where we feel like we have impact and all we're doing instead of all we're doing is reviewing a cooked document. Okay, that was one of the things you've you've really uh, mentioned several times. And the other thing you've mentioned is the budget process being out of sync with town manager goals, town manager financial uh, guidelines, and time time manage town manager evaluation. And I believe we have already said to GOL, we want you to look at that in the coming year, but. I don't know that we've ever gotten back to the discussion of how can what can we do in the budget process that makes it feel like all of those meetings we spend in May are um, as impactful as possible. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll hear Kathy's response, but I I do think I've shared my thoughts on it, which is to not put those meetings in May. Um, I don't mind reviewing a baked document. Paul is very good at presenting a balanced budget, and I don't necessarily think he should present something else other than a balanced budget. That's what we ask of him in our financial guidelines. For me, it's the fact that Paul is very good at sending us a balanced budget because he listens to his staff and creates a budget in accordance to that. But for us to hear where staff are at, um, well, getting a balanced budget doesn't see those what are we trying to get from those meetings right and so for a lot of us it's to understand the priority areas for them to you know talk through where their needs are um we can read a budget document and i i think we all really appreciate hearing from staff but for us to think through i mean i'm thinking about the financial guidelines we just created for us to say we want to prioritize um grants and climate action, you know, is that something, and I know we didn't say that explicitly, but 
is that something that the sustainability director is looking for at this time? I think that for, for me, it's not creating, it's not about adding work to staff or shifting any work away from Paul. And I'm, I think this is a needle that we need to thread really carefully because I'm not, I, in no way am I trying to step on Paul's toes or in his work. But I think for me, hearing from staff in October and November would be more beneficial for us as we go into creating the goals and the budget guidelines. Um, and, and I don't know, I mean, I, th I think that's what's, or maybe it's that we don't necessarily, I don't know, I gotta, I I'll think on it a bit more, but for me the the purpose and the workload in May doesn't align with what we get out of it in terms of what we're producing with the, or what we decide on with the budget. It's incredibly beneficial to hear from staff but I don't know that it needs to relate to the budget if we're not going to change anything about it because we get a balanced document. I'm still working this through in my head and I'm happy to brainstorm it more, but those are my initial thoughts. Jesse? Yeah, I actually, Anna, I'm not gonna to speak to that at all. Um, I think it is, it's a challenge. And one of the issues Anna's raising is, do we find our own time well spent meeting twice a week, every week in May, when the budget is sort of set. So it's looking for, is there a way of adding value to that process? One of the things I, um, we haven't done very much, but we've been, Sean, when he was pulling together this big budget book, was asking us if we had any suggestions about the way the information is presented. Um, and we didn't did and did not necessarily respond to it. But when we just did these guidelines, the question of what share of our budget is supported by property tax versus um, receipts versus the state came up. And I went back and thank goodness that there's this thing out there called the internet that I could put town of Amherst budget 2003, because there was no way I could find it on our own website. But when I bet went back to two decades ago, there was regularly a table that sh gave you the answer and showed you state revenues in each of the other pieces. And we don't capture that anymore. You can do it. You can do the math each time, but it was literally a diagram that made me really easy. So I, I'm going to pull it together since I found, I want to go back to, we moved here in, in 1982, and I probably can't go back as far as 1982, but I was trying to make a continuous series to show people that there's been a shift, a very dramatic shift over time on um, the overall where money is coming for municipalities, that the state has been cutting back and the federal government, I'm not go federal, but I think it's just a useful thing. So it's something I would like to see in the budget document, you know, on just, uh, you know, a his historical. And Mandy asked on this one, we did 23, 2003 and 2015 because it was already in the document and 2024. But she said, what about 2023? And, you know, we can do the math, but just thinking of putting that, because it's useful for every counselor to understand that. And it's useful for the public to understand that, um, that we're, uh, we're, I think of it, we're in this box, that's a very tight box. Um, and some of it could be controlled, but it's above, it's outside the council you know, whether that's grants. So it's something um, I'd, I, I'll i work on, Andy, just pulling it together, and then maybe we can make it as a recommendation that the staff just keep updating it every year. So we get, you don't have to do a Google search to find earlier budgets. The town was really yeah. different in, in 1984 and 85 in terms of the flow of funds. Uh, AmherstMA.gov slash budget. Yeah, for the current yeah. budget. The, the, uh, I can find current, I can find I can find back ten years very easily. It was oh, okay. yeah. it was going back twenty and thirty that was difficult. Yeah, yeah. okay. I mean, you and do it, have to decide how far to go back in history because Bernie made the point at the last meeting, which I was uh, commented on a little bit, and that is that uh, the passage of Proposition Two and a Half in nineteen eighty really changed 
how towns finance and <laughs> state aid was not really a factor back before 1980 uh it has been since so history really you know the history that's useful is what's happened since two and a half that don't try and go back further well in any case as, as i said i'll just do it because i found yeah, it really i found it really interesting yeah and and just so there's there's no surprise later. I mean, Kathy, I, it would be great if you sent um, something about what what you're recommending, what you, your idea, um, so that I could share that with uh, Holly and Jen when we put together the budget book this year. But we're in the midst of looking for a new finance director, and uh, the budget book for this year is probably going to look a lot like the one, the formatting and everything is going to look oh, like yeah. what we did next, last year. We're not um doing any any my big biggest changes. thing on the budget book has always been an index so when if i wanted to know what page the police were on i didn't have to put a little sticky tab somewhere in it. <laughs> if i've actually you know so it, it's some of it's pretty simple um i don't think it needs a lot of work now you say it's simple but it's like <laughs> multiple spreadsheets interacting with each other that we pull into a document so but i appreciate that suggestion and um once we get into it i can see it, if we can include an index or if we could color code departments or something like that yeah i think that is uh, what kathy is saying i have the same experience if i want to look up uh, a particular department i have to remember which uh area it falls under and then look through all of the pages in community services in order to find public health there's no way to just get there instantly so in any case, i hear that i don't in I'm word not... it, yeah i'm sorry in word you can actually code your 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 headers into a table of contents right yeah, but the, you know one level not... one level I'm not sure what uh, software this is structured in, and we're talking about it from the user side. Um, so we'll, we'll do our best. You always uh, do. If I could go back really quickly, I think, Andy, it might be helpful, um, and I don't know that now is the moment, because I what I'm pitching isn't something that I would pitch for next year, given the staffing shifts in, in finance, um, in terms of changing up how we do this particular process. But it is something that I would, I'd want to consider maybe for two years out, um, giving us a little bit of time to shift because this would be a huge change if it did move forward. I think it sounds like what might be helpful. Um, Athena, I feel like it's possible. I'm not assigning you a reaction, but it's possible that there might be some feelings about changing up the timeline. Um, and so it, it might be helpful at some point for either if Athena is willing to sit down with me and talk about what what this could look like, if it makes any sense, um, because I, I think I only know my own perspective on it. And this because it's it's really staff heavy. I don't I wouldn't want to actually pitch a change without engaging with staff on it. So I think, Andy, if, if it's possible or Lynn, I guess you asked the question. This isn't something that I'm proposing we we suggest as a change for the coming year. It's something that I'd like to continue to keep on the burner. Um, and and I can work with Athena or Paul or whoever would be appropriate to say, you know, it doesn't need to look the way I'm suggesting, but if this is the goal, how do we how might we get there better? I, I think that's I think that's an understandable and reasonable request because okay. it's um we it, we're not going to be able to do it this year but no no certainly shouldn't be talking about it two years from now in the same way <laughs> that's, the, that's the idea um yeah i do have a couple concerns about your suggestion but i think um and you and i can sit down and talk about that i, I would love to hear your thoughts but i think it, it might be a worthwhile discussion for the council for the finance committee to have early in the year about how you know the goal of the meetings with the departments and how best to use the time with the departments. I think in the past, we've had a set of questions for each department that we expect um, they'll come back with answers, uh, but just having a conversation about, you know, the best use of the committee's time and what you're hoping to achieve with the time that we have with staff, I think is really worthwhile. So if we could do that early on so that when we could sit down, that would, that would be great. Yep. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry to, co-opt your meeting andy but no, and I, I, I want to end I did say what else to, since i also wanted to recognize that this is likely our last meeting 
which we will confirm in just a second, I did want to have an open time for discussion and general questions and thoughts. So this is helpful. Thank you. Anything else that anybody wants to raise today? No, but we want Anybody's, to thank you for any, all your work, Andy. <laughs> yeah, Andy. Anything uh, people want to raise for uh, the remainder of the year? Happy holidays. Yeah, yeah. so hearing that, Enjoy. Uh, um, we have a plan for the minutes. We have a plan for the carryover memo. We are we have no anticipated business, so I think that uh, when we adjourn, we can assume that um, the likelihood is pretty close to zero that there'll be a notice that we need to schedule another meeting of this committee during this term. So with that, I thank you all and adjourn. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, everybody.